Good afternoon, everybody. Keith David, CEO and co-founder of Bluefin Foods, and we are transforming the way we produce food as a species. So we are providing the world with tasty, healthy, and sustainable seafood. And this couldn't come a moment too soon because the way we produce seafood, commercial fishing, is broken. It's seriously broken. So year after year, we're providing more and more energy into this process that's destroying our environment and giving diminishing returns of food that's literally poisoning us as we eat it with plastics, heavy metals, pollutants. In fact, uh, a recent study showed that uh, the average person, so you and I, consume about a credit card's worth of plastic every week. Pretty gross, right? So we need a new solution, and we need it now before it's too late. This solution is cultivated seafood. So cultivated seafood is a method of producing large quantities of real meat from just a few cells of the target animal. And here at Bluefin Foods, we're focusing on developing novel and proprietary tech in order to scale this production to mass market potential. So um, McKinsey is saying this will be a 20 billion market by 2030, but really it's the entire seafood market because this is how we're gonna produce meat in the future. And that's about 580 billion worldwide right now. Now, let me shift gears a little bit and talk about our most valuable asset, which is the team. So the four of us are the founding team, and uh, we have half business, half science. So myself and Thaisa are the business side, and then Adrian and Isaac are the science side. And between the four of us, we have a combined 50 plus years of experience in um, areas that are really going to add impact to this industry, right? And we all met at UCLA with, through our shared passion of making this world more sustainable. Now, why us, right? So the key thing is that firms in the space have shown that this is possible. Cultivated meat is possible. Now, what we're doing is uh, we're focusing on new and defensible technologies in order to scale this production of cultivated seafood to reach mass market potential. So what everybody's done to this point is not scalable. It's not future proof. So we just started our seed round. We're asking for four and a half million for 18 months of runway towards growth and R&D. And now real quick before I leave you guys, just want to show a little bit of our progress, some momentum we've gotten. So um, you can see on the left here is our proof of concept. So that's a tiny little bite of cultivated seafood. And we're working on the deliciousness factor. Um, we're also working on the look, but it is cultivated seafood, it's fish. And on the right here, uh, you can see this is it under the microscope. So those fibers are what we're growing the cells on. That's proprietary scaffolding technology. And uh, green here is stained for healthy, viable cells. So you can see all these cells are super happy and healthy, aligned on the scaffolding, growing to produce this cultivated seafood. So uh, thanks, and I will open it up for any questions. Oh. I'm happy to kick it off. Um, just a quick question. Understanding that the consumer goods space is highly regulated, there's a lot of approvals. Where are you guys in that process? Yep. So the FDA is huge, right? So because we are seafood, it's FDA, not USDA. Uh, that's, it's good and bad. So basically how it's working is this industry is so young, FDA doesn't know what they're doing. So the good news is we're going to be able to get GMP with whatever we do as long as we work with them. And so we've had discussions with uh, directors from the FDA, and basically they're like, hey, you're going to work with us hand in hand through this development process. And so that when we come out the tail end, they're going to approve every step of the way as we go. And so that way we know we'll get approval on this. Um, and so it's unfortunately highly inefficient, but high success rate, which is great. Uh, Neil from Elevation Ventures. Uh, question is, you talked about your a solution being scalable and others not being, but you didn't talk about why. So why? Yep, good question. So basically what everyone's done to date to show that this is possible, right? It's based upon technology that they've borrowed from pharma, bioprocesses, all these things that exist, right? And so it's shown that, hey, you know, this company can produce a chicken nugget that's $20 and it's half plant, half animal. Like, cool, that's great. But we're not trying to disrupt a few super rich people. We want to provide the world, right, with this seafood. So that's why we're really focused on new proprietary technology and processes from the ground up. And this is 100% our focus. And that's really our competitive advantage as well. So these other firms have all this sunk time and cost on tech that's not going to scale. Everyone knows it's not going to scale. And so we're focusing on that specifically. And so the short answer to that question is brand new technology and processes that does not exist now that has to exist in order to tap into that $580 billion market.
Okay, so then the logical follow on to that is where are you in that process of proving that you can scale? Yeah, absolutely. So let me go to the timeline here. So basically, we just started, right? We started our R&D last September. Uh, we raised 615000 for our pre-seed round. And in that time, we've developed a lab space, and we've shown this, what we call the stackable, right? So this is the proof of concept that, hey, you know, we're creating this with uh, new technologies and new processes. So next up is we're going to embrace the fact that we all these new technologies, right, and the scalability of it. And so that's what we're calling the snackable. So you can imagine what we did now with uh, the stackable is going to be with these new technologies. So if you break it down really quickly, you have four aspects of this uh, industry, right? You have the cell line, the growth media, the scaffolding, and the bioreactor. So all four of those are necessary verticals to make this whole process happen. And within all of those, there's gonna be a ton of IP technology um, to go into this. So for instance, uh, we're developing in-house proprietary cell lines that are optimized through IPSC generations. Uh, the media we're developing with co-partners, so we'll have exclusive license access to that. And the scaffolding will be in-house um, trade secrets. And then the uh, bioreactor we're developing with a co-development partner in Europe, but we will own the uh, patent for that. So it's a mixture between uh, trade secrets and patents that will end up throughout this portfolio. Just on that last piece around the bioreactors, I know that like just broadly, that is a big bottleneck for biotech generally yeah. and you're saying you're developing a new bioreactor how are you anticipating trying to get through that bottleneck that we're seeing with broadly in biotech yep so we're working on that already so we've already activated this partnership with a key uh, bioreactor development firm in europe and they're focused specifically on next generation bioreactor technologies and so we've entered this contract deal with them and this is the core focus right and if you look at our like more detailed gantt chart and development timeline this is the big bottleneck, right? So this is what we need. And so the good news is now we know our marching order, right? We know every other vertical and every other program needs to match under this bioreactor. But yes, so we're developing with them brand new bioreactor technologies um, to really increase cell density, increase automation, uh, increase the taste and the texture and all these good things that the industry has not seen yet because the industry today is using, utilizing a lot of big stirred tank reactors from pharma and stuff like that. And so this is the future, right? The bioreactor is a key part. It's long lead time. It's a big lift. We're starting on it now, and we're focusing exclusively on everything that's scalable, including the bioreactor. If you develop a bioreactor that can address these problems, is that a broadly applicable as a bioreactor, or is it very much highly tailored towards what you're doing here? Yeah. So it is specifically tailored towards cultivated meat, and that's good and bad. Good so that it's going to be, because the orders of magnitude and that we're going to have to reach for scalability are so big, you can think that every little ounce of efficiency we're going to have to squeeze out, that's what we're going to have to do. So this is going to be very targeted and very highly specific for cultivated meat. The good news is, if you can do this with bluefin tuna, it's a short leap to do it with other fish, and it's a slightly longer leap to do it with cows, chicken, pigs. So the technology, uh, it scales across all meat, but it is also very animal and species specific. So there's a lot of variability there, but there's also a lot of deep richness to go into species specific customization. Uh, what, what's your thought about uh, barriers to uh, other folks um, you know, beating you out at this game? Is it just a time game? So whoever's, whoever's first wins, or is this something unique that you believe you're, you've got that others can't do because you do it differently? Yep. So the good news is the market is going to be huge, right? So imagine the meat market today. It's not going to be a winner take all, right? There's plenty of room. However, because this industry is so young, it's definitely going to be an advantage to who can get there first, right? And so if you look at some of the competition, um, they have more years, they have a good bit of funding, right? But really, again, you're looking at how are you going to unlock the future potential of this market? Scalability. And that's the common weakness here is they're all focusing on this kind of current technology Right. And so really here at Bluefin, like I said, is we're focusing 100 percent on the scalable technology so that we can really beat them to the punch. So we're not trying to catch up to where industry is now. We want to leapfrog them and get to generation two technologies and hardware and processes so that we can really reach the scalability. And that's going to be the key to unlocking this market. Uh, how, oh, go ahead. Oh. I was just going to ask, I mean, not to, to jump ahead, but thinking about that. So how significant are the barriers to actually finding something that people will 
except from a consumer standpoint, both taste, texture, and just overall comfort with it being fake? Yeah, good question. So there's definitely a barrier to entry, right? This is a new technology. There's always going to be these barriers. However, we're seeing on the right side of this slide, uh, the new generations are really embra embracing clean food, green tech. So you can see um, over 30% of Gen Z are extremely likely to totally replace meat with cultivated meat. So there is going to be a hurdle, right? Because this is a new technology and we're going to leverage a lot of uh, marketing and kind of co-development campaigns. We're, we're a B2B business. We're focusing on targeting to sushi and seafood distributors on the two coasts. And so we're going to really utilize their brand weight to help these co-marketing campaigns and get over this hurdle. But the good news is it's looking really positive, especially for the younger generations. They're really embracing this idea of new, clean, superior food. I'll give you a high level question I had. What's the, the shelf life of this anticipated to be? Uh, so the same, it's the same shelf life as you would see from the fish you pull from the ocean because it's the same thing as the fish you pull from the ocean. The tissue is the exact same, right? The end product is going to be identical to actually the fish you get from the ocean. We're just controlling it from the cellular level. And the good news is it's the logistics part of your question that I'm really interested in because we don't have to pull it out of the ocean, freeze it, ship it over to a processing plant, ship it to the thing. You know, we can produce the freshest seafood you're ever going to have in the middle of the desert, 2,000 miles from the ocean. So this is very scalable, and you can think we can do this anywhere on or off the planet as you look into the future, right? You can talk about having the ability to have this fresh seafood wherever you are. And with your savings on logistics, do you anticipate being cost competitive with fresh seafood? Yes. So again, if you scale this enough, then you're going to get to price parity and eventually beyond it. So this is the future of how we're going to produce meat as a species. And so the, that's the problem we're solving. It's not that it's possible. We're solving the problem where we need to bring this uh, price parity gap down to where we can compete now. And then as new technologies and more scaling and more efficiencies develop, we're eventually going to beat that. And then it's game over because then you have a superior product for a lower price and it's a no-brainer. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.